Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's edition of The Daily Market Commentary. I am your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Hope everybody had an absolutely amazing weekend. Had a great trading week as we were off the entire last week. Took a little bit of a family vacation. I went to the uh, the House of Mouse uh, and and the Wizarding World with my friends Harry Potter and Mickey Mouse. No, I took my uh, took my family to Universal Studios and, and uh, Disney World and had a great time. And so I uh, decided it was uh, it was a, it was a good opportunity to take a vacation and not do anything, which I did not. But I'm back in the saddle, so let's go ahead and dive right in. For those of you new to the channel, do me a favor, click that little subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell so that you get the updates as they come available. So let's do what we do each and every day, looking at 10 to 12 futures markets, identifying potential breakout trades and turning points. So last night we had a live trading room uh, at tradersarmy.com, and so some of these lines and some of these trades are from last night, uh, and I will review some of what we talked about in the last night's session. Uh, we did actually get into a live trade last night. Uh, it's worked out for a nice little profit so far. I wound up actually uh, closing out of it uh, just recently, but we entered into it last night, so we'll cover that one. And then there's two that are still hanging out there that we didn't enter last night, which I'll talk a little bit about today. So... Uh, on the S&P, we had a potential uh, for a breakout above this level here. Now, this was on Friday's high. Uh, if you wanted to get long above Friday's high, I thought there was a decent little opportunity for that. Um, we have popped just above there. We're up 18 and a half points in the pre-market today. Uh, so I'm going to remove this line now just in case uh, you know we, we get a little bit of a pullback. Now, if we do get a bit of a pullback, where do I see this thing pulling back to? Well, there's a couple of different areas and opportunities in a pullback that, that this could uh, that this could be valid. This one down here, this one right in here, and then this gap area right through here. So the level that I'm probably most excited about on this S and P, um, you know, I look at this little area right here as a potential reversal. But remember, this is off a 15 minute chart. So it's a slightly weaker opportunity. Uh, so I'm going to change this to a purple line. So it's a slightly weaker opportunity, but it is still one uh, for us to look at and pay attention to if price indeed comes back down. Tempted to take this one right here off this parabolic straight up move, but I actually like the gap, a little bit of basing and then the move higher. Now also remember this is a globex session level, so that, that also lowers the probability of success. Uh, the trade we, that we set up last night was the NASDAQ long, and so if you are still in that NASDAQ long from our trading room last night, you are up about uh, about 19 points, 20 points overall in that position, so it's been a nice little move. Um, it, uh, it it did a quick move up of about uh, of a couple of points, you know, right as we entered the, the position, gave us a pullback in the overnight sessions, but it didn't pull back to below our entry. So even if you moved your stop up to break even um, to before you went to bed, then you're still you're still doing quite well uh, as it's continuing to rise. So uh, if indeed you have missed that one, I wouldn't take the breakout now because you've already missed 20 points of it. I'd like to see a little bit of a base before the breakout. I think there's still you know there's obviously we're we're setting brand new all time highs again, uh, so there's plenty of of opportunity for it to continue to run higher. Um, on the daily chart, we have a nice upward trend uh, that we are, you know, still uh, still sitting sitting there with, and we got a nice little pullback off of the daily chart, uh, to you know, a pullback that's a healthy pullback. So, uh, looking at it even on a weekly chart, uh, you can see that we've just kind of continued this same upward momentum. Now, once again, our our uh, our momentum is slowing a bit on both the daily and the weekly chart in our upward moves. If I throw on a quick momentum indicator, you'll be able to see that that momentum is slowing. Um, significantly slower momentum, lower high uh, here, high, same high in price uh, on our on our MACD indicator. Now, that slowing momentum doesn't mean it's going to be over. We had slowing momentum here as well, and price moved up from that point. So I still need to break through some, some strong demand levels before I would think that, that this upward move... 
um, is over. Crude oil. So here's a crude oil level that we had looked at last evening and set up a potential breakout of what was at the time. Let me uh, clear all these studies. Potential breakout of what was at the time a little bit of a, of a bear uh, pen pattern. Oh, excuse me, bull pennant, right? We had the move up followed by this kind of triangle move. And we said, well, if we break above this 7364, that could be a potential entry. Well, we didn't break above that 7364. So now I have to remove these. We actually stayed um, below that 7364, although I still think 7364 could be uh, a decent breakout long to the upside. We have not... Uh, have not hit that thing as of yet, and so let's see if we if we come into that one later today. Gold uh, in our gold position. Let me move all these studies. A level that uh, was a potential short was this area right up in here uh, on a fifteen minute chart. It's a little bit easier to see. So it's this little bit of a sideways basing here before at pretty strong drop. And when we were looking at it last night, we'd said, well, there's two ways you can take the trade. You can take the breakdown, because we were basing last night right here. You can take the breakdown below the base or wait for the reversal for price to come back up. This area here where we're waiting for the reversal to price to come back up, still very valid. If you took the breakdown, you're still doing okay on that one as well. I like the reversal slightly better than the breakdown at that time, um, just simply because it was a slightly higher up on, the, uh, on that supply-demand equation. Uh, and I would, would want to see that price can, can, can come back up to here for a stronger move down. Uh, when I look at this on the four-hour chart, we're still kind of in this uh, overall big picture chop, but we have established a little bit of a downward trend on the four-hour chart where I've got lower swing highs and lower swing lows. So our next move, you know, if you think about impulsive move, corrective move, impulsive move, corrective move, impulsive move, corrective move, our next move is an impulsive move. Impulsive moves typically will blow through um, levels on the same time period, which means this level here on the four hour will probably get, get blown through and price will continue to move down. All right, looking at our bonds and, and currency markets. So in our bond market, we had a level set up from last week where we did a nice little touch and go off of that level, and we've actually gotten a really nice move off of there. So I don't know if anybody was able to catch that uh, that little short there on the bond markets. So if you were, then you should have rewarded yourself handsomely by moving your stop down to probably at least this area uh, above here uh, as it's continuing its, uh, its march lower. In the Aussie, um, the, the level we looked at in the Aussie yesterday was this area right up here just near that pivot before that, uh, that's that fairly strong move down. Um, other than that, there's no real uh, super, uh, super amazing areas for us to look at in the, uh, in the Aussie. And currencies in general um, are a little, bit, uh, a little bit less opportunistic today uh, than normal. In the Euro, we've got a level up above. We're close to getting to that area. We've almost come to it. I'm, I'm going to actually change this to a dashed line style trade um, as we have a little bit of basing before a pretty nice move down. When price comes back into here, this could be a decent opportunity. The reason that I'm moving to the dashed line style is because we've come close to it, came back. We're coming close to it again. If we base in front of it again, it would scare me a little bit. So I'm going to do the dashed line style on that. Canadian dollar is a gap and go uh, scenario right now is it gapped up off the open and it's continuing to run. So for those of you that play those gap and go style, that one's kind of continuing its move. There's nothing to look at at the moment until we get a decent pullback for a chance to get in or I get a basing for a breakout opportunity. Great British pound, Japanese yen. So we still have this area up here in the pound for a potential reversal price coming back into this region. Now we got actually, this was a, a trade from last week that I'd had set up before I went on vacation. Price hit the level and moved down. So I took the lines that existed there and switched it to a dashed line trade, but that level is still very valid. Um, that was found, by the way, off this little bit of basing here fall, and this little level right in these inside those two wicks. So it was actually a 
call it a stacking of levels of of a uh, of of the supply and demand balance equation there. Uh, and then the Japanese yen uh, has been a very strong downward move. So I found it, we found a little bit of a level here off this little base before a strong drop into that region. Um, Copper, we had a little bit of a breakdown in copper off, off that little line, and then it just didn't, didn't do a whole lot. Uh, and that's, you know, that's if only if you're more aggressive for some sort of a setup. For now, we've got a little level down here where we could see a bit of a reversal if pricing gets to that one. And then Nat Gas, we're in a potential area for Nat Gas for a reversal right now. Um, you know, if we, uh, if we come down from here, that would be a decent setup. The problem with the Nat Gas level is that we based in, in front of the level. So right now you're looking at basically a one-to-one -one reward to risk. So I don't love this area. Uh, and if you already are in this short, just keep your stops fairly tight. Uh, move your stop to break even, I would say, uh, once we move down into about this region here. So for those of you that are looking for more information, uh, visit us at tradersarmy.com. Until tomorrow, I hope everybody has an absolutely amazing trading day. And I will see you soon. Bye.